What's up, Internet? You're tuning to episode 42 of the Steam Deck Podcast, Flip Screen Games Weekly Podcast, all about Valve's portable PC powerhouse, the Steam Deck. I'm your host, Pete and Bessie, joined as always by my partner in Steam Deck related crimes, Mr. Stephen Radford. Hello, hello. Hello, Steve. How's it feel to be back? It's good. Good to be back. Good to talk more about Steam Deck. Really excited. And, you know, we're one week away from Diablo 4, which I'm going to be using the hell out of my Steam Deck again for. I cannot wait. Cannot wait. Steve, so I, I told you this offline. Um, I'm, I'm also very excited for Diablo 4. Like, I, I was already excited for it, but I listened to um, some of the, like, preview coverage that's come out now um, just this past week. And I'm like, God, this game sounds really good. And I really, I want to get to a point where you and I can do a hardcore run. I, that's my goal. That's what it's called. <laughs> What's it called? Is that the one, right, where, like, you, you die? It's Torment, and isn't it? Something like that. Torment, whatever. But I, yeah, I, I want to do that. I want to. The I wanna... permadeath mode. What is it called? The permadeath mode, right? Oh, okay. Where you just, yeah. you die and you're gone, you lose everything. I want to do that together and i i think it would be a very fun uh, i don't know that i trust you thank you i don't know that you have enough experience in diablo to do that with me i would be very upset with you if you got me killed like very upset with you wow all right well maybe i don't want to do with you anymore then, that we'll you know? do we'll do the story Mr. mode we'll do the story mode first okay like i said to you i want to do a couple of runs on the story mode because if it's the same as previous diablos which i think it is every single class has their own storyline and so you kind of go through it and you learn about them and then you get unique cutscenes for them so i want to go through and at least do a couple of those before uh before i get to any of the end game stuff which i know sounds phenomenal as well yeah it's a, it's sounds like there's a lot going on that's very very exciting um once you get to end game for i think for a lot of people that's going to be where the game really starts mm -hmm. i think i think that's what it was like with diablo 3 to be honest where we had the the ladder system um so i i feel like and the seasonal content and stuff like that and that's where the battle pass will come in but yeah i'm looking forward to diablo so expect some diablo content on at least on the flip screen games podcast if you're not listening to that that's probably where we'll end up talking at most about what games we're playing yeah definitely uh, keep it tuned uh but that's not what we're here to talk about today we're here to talk about steam os 3.4.8 update and some comments that we got over on twitter from uh from you know our, our good friend uh mr pierre lou uh no i'm sorry no it is yeah this is pierre I, yeah, i'm sorry man. Yeah, flag. I, I I was like I was like, wait a minute. Are they the same guy? Yes, they are. Sorry about that, Pierre. Um, but yeah, of course, uh Plagman, one of the one of the the architects of the Steam Deck, right? And uh he quote tweeted the news that 3.4.8 was out and he said, This is out in stable now, so preview is nice and empty with the with the looking eyes emoji, right? So Yeah. I mean, obviously, that's pretty interesting, right? Because we've been talking about 3.5 for a while and that it was, you know, um, going to represent a really major change for, for Steam Deck and that it's, it's something that, like, we've been getting these minor, minor updates again and again and again and again. And it's like, when is 3.5 going to come? And it feels like, I mean, it Now's feels like this is it, right? It's imminent, right? Yeah, because I feel like, it was there it went away it came it came back you can like get it on the main channel now but nobody should use that on as their daily driver and there's so many changes in there hdr support the vibrancy slider the um the simultaneous multi-threading changes so that we may not even need to use power tools anymore a music control where you can like use the built-in soundtracks like there's so much stuff in there along with like the the GPU updates where you'll you'll get your storage back with the changes to the shader caching. So I'm really hoping. Oh, and don't forget the like the KDE plasma upgrade. So like the the desktop version will be up, updated. We'll probably get a new version of the Linux kernel in there. There's like so much stuff that we're waiting on uh in in Steam OS. And I would imagine 3.5 is where it's gonna come. And I still I'm still hoping and like praying that this is the version we get 
with the installer so we can put it on other devices, but also that's the multi Windows. that's the multi million dollar question, right? And yeah, obviously, like uh, proper support for dual boot for Windows is, I think, an exciting prospect for a number of reasons. But the the proper release of Steam OS and being able to use it as a, a desktop device, I think, is that's a whole other thing, you know, that we've been talking about for ages now. And I think it's something that open just opens up so many possibilities in very interesting, exciting ways. And that I think is the thing I'm most excited for that could come of it, you know? Yeah, I think for me, um, I, I'm excited that it may bring a level of compatibility that we've not seen before. I'm hoping it drives more and more games to support Proton or Proton to support more games. I'm really hoping that it kind of pushes developers who have been the holdouts with like anti-cheat like um, Destiny 2 to finally get on board and be like, okay, there's a lot of people using SteamOS now. People are trying it as their main install for gaming on their on their desktop PCs, or they might be installing it on something like the ROG Ally or onto a gaming laptop uh, because it's a lot more light, lightweight than Windows. It's catered specifically for gaming. You have like a nice gaming interface. I could see a lot of people because I know I, I have friends and and you know Max is is one of them, right? He's got his computer right next to his TV um, in his room, and he, he he could just plug that straight into the TV, and you could have big picture mode. But it's like as you boot into Steam OS, it's going straight into the interface in the same way that it does on on your Steam Deck. And I think to your point, there are a lot of folks uh, that you know, have multiple PCs and one of them is like this, this device is just for gaming, right? This is my gaming PC that I use in my off hours and I have a laptop or another device that I use for work, right? So the idea that if you, you know, if, if the literally the only function you're using for your, your rig is to game and then maybe browse the internet here or there when you need to, um, yeah, like, why wouldn't you choose this over Windows? It's free. And like, as you said, it's lightweight. It's going to be um, optimized for the use case that you need it for in a way that, you know, not to say that Windows can't be, but it isn't. Yeah, like Windows box. has like a, a gaming mode as of, I think, Windows 10, but Windows 11 takes it kind of one step further. But there's just a lot of overhead when it comes to Windows. You know, you install Windows, you get Microsoft Teams and Paint and all of this other stuff that you don't necessarily care about if all you're going to be doing on your on your device is playing games from Steam. Yeah, that's it precious drive space, you know? Yeah, it's just junk that's there that you have to end up... Like, how many times have you bought a PC and you've gone in and you're just like, put that uninstall, uninstall, put that in the trash, like, I'm waiting for Windows updates. Even when I downloaded a fresh install of Windows 10 and Windows 11, it happened with as well, from Microsoft's website. I still had updates to do, and I'm like, seriously? I literally just downloaded this ISO from your website. You couldn't have put the updates in it for me? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, we'll see if SteamOS doesn't end up having those same problems at some point. But, you know, I think the promise of having a, a really, truly viable alternative to Windows is very exciting you know and one that will have support from an established company that you you know trust to listen to user feedback and iterate you know and and try to continue to make the product more valuable to, to yeah. the user base i think that's what's most interesting about steam os 3.5 and the and the change that you can already see in that if you enable developer mode and download from the main branch is so many of so much of this stuff originated as as like decky plugins. It was like, oh, we, you can increase the vibrancy that's in, awesome. in like that. Mango Hard and stuff. And it's like there was a, there was vibrant deck, and now that's being integrated directly as a slider. The music control, someone had built like a a control so you could control like Spotify or whatever you've got installed, and it came up in the quick access menu. They're building that right in where you can listen to soundtracks, and presumably we'll be able to link in other. Um, applications as well at some point a lot of the stuff you you we've seen is stuff that people have like driven for and and valve is just like yeah that should probably be in here in the same way that the the uh, smt stuff that pretty much was broken and shouldn't have functioned in the way it did and i think plagman has has said that power tools fixed it it was like a workaround like a band-aid solution where you had to manually change the cores yourself 
and that's going to be fixed in SteamOS 3.5. Like it's going to be such a big upgrade, like the biggest upgrade we've ever had on on SteamOS since um since the Steam Deck's launch. So let me ask you one question, uh, or I guess two questions, and then we can you know we'll put a pin on this for the for future episodes of the show. Of all of the features you believe will come to 3.5 what what are you thinking will be the most exciting for you as you know um an avid user and that like could significantly impact your experience day to day on the deck i think there's probably two features so i think one is the smt stuff because i i am a user of power tools i do emulate stuff on on the steam deck um dolphins one of them and we'll talk a little bit about that later on uh, and to use that, you have to, as I, I made a YouTube video about it, using power tools is pretty much essential. You need to, to disable a number of cores in order to drive more power to the cores that are still turned on. But I also think the 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 GPU, up, uh, like the driver upgrade, where it's going to change the way that shader caching uh, happens and is stored, and it's going to free up so much space for people like or even on the 256 gig model, space is precious. You know, I, yeah, I need absolutely. to down, re-download Diablo because I had to uninstall it to install something else after the beta ended. So I've got to reinstall that for next week. And I've got a terrible internet connection, as Pete is well aware of. My internet <laughs> sucks. And so uh, I, it takes a long time to download any game. I have to just leave my Steam Deck with its screen on. That's another feature I would really like at some point is background downloads with the screen turned off. That would be really uh, nice. <laughs> because that's not possible still. God, um, I, so I'm just going to have to leave it downloaded. I, I really, sometimes you tell me these things and I just, I feel so bad because it, it really makes me realize what a privilege it is to live somewhere that has, like I live in a city that has good internet infrastructure. And honestly, that doesn't make a lot of sense because Philadelphia is old as hell. Right, like it's like there are roads that were built for horses, and it's like tough to get a car down it. <laughs> but like, I got I got that high speed fiber optic internet, baby. I, I got cows at the back of my house. I hear them mooing <laughs> sometimes. So it's like <laughs> I live in the countryside, pretty much. I, you know, I'm not in the I'm not in the city. But even if I was, right, New York City is infamous for having absolutely dreadful internet. Absolutely. And so yeah. if you if you are in a big city. You're probably not going to have that much of a different experience. It's just, it's really just the luck of the it's draw, luck. whether you've yeah. got a good internet connection or not. It's, it's honestly a thing where, like, um, you know, if I if I'm ever going to move out of my neighborhood, that's one of the, you know, in the same way that like if I was a parent, I'd be like, well, what's the school district like? I'm, I got to be like, what's the internet like? I'm not moving <laughs> yeah, somewhere with bad honestly. internet. I can imagine a lot of people are like that now, especially as more and more people work from home. But yeah, that was one of the things for me. But I did the check. And the the stupid BT lied to me this, that I could get 120 megabits per second. Don't believe them. Never believe BT. They're liars. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other question I wanted to ask is, when do you think we see 3.5? When does it roll I out? think 3.5 is coming to preview this week. Uh, so by the time you're listening to this, it may already be in preview. And if it's not this week, it's coming. It's going to be coming next week to preview. And I think they're probably going to aim for the beginning of July for the release. Uh, that seems to be the they, they. They definitely seem to have scaled back the releases. I don't know if you've noticed that. It seems to be yeah. kind of once a month that we get one stable release now. Uh, and I and I think maybe they got bit by a couple of the the bad updates that made it through to stable that we spoke about um, a few episodes back. Uh, and it, it makes sense, you know, you don't want to burn your customers and why not just slow things down and make Absolutely. sure you test it in in state in preview um, and before you push it out to to stable. But the fact that Plagman's teasing that preview is totally empty uh, makes me think that they're going to be pushing something up there pretty soon. Yeah, I think I think you're probably right about that. So uh, before we before we move on here, I want to pull a question from our discord. Uh, that we got from Team Linux 01. Uh, and we're not going to answer the question this week, but I, I want to I wanna, uh, throw this one out to the, the audience as well uh, because I think it's an interesting one. And it's, it's, I think it's a question that warrants a main topic. It's something we've talked around, but I'd love to really break it down and get into it on a, on a fuller, in, in a fuller way, in a deeper way. Uh, so Team Linux wrote in and said, how much would you be willing to pay for a new Steam machine and what kind of port... Uh, <laughs> 
excuse me, what kind of performance would you want with it? Let's say it included a, a new Steam controller in the price. So I think this is a fantastic question. I, you know, we have been crying <laughs> the idea out. That there's a new, new Steam controller at all. It's like a really exciting prospect for me because I really want that to happen at some yeah. point. I really hope it happens. Yeah, I, you point. are the only person I've seen uh, in the world out here like, we need it, we need one, we need another one, we need another one. And I am with you now, right? As a deck lover, um, I would love to see something that brings the you know tactile experience of holding the deck in your hand and having the track pads and all that built in so that you could have a proper you know uh, analogous controller experience when you were playing in docked mode or with the steam machine ideally um so we're gonna talk about this i mean we'll see right it, next week if steam 3.5 is out that's probably gonna dominate the conversation so we'll see how we do uh but if not i'd love to make this the main topic for next week's show so for everybody in the audience if you know, you have thoughts about about a Steam machine. Is that something you'd even be interested in now that you already have a Steam Deck? Do you kind of feel like you don't need that anymore? Um, or you feel a little bit more like Steve and I, where you are maybe interested in the prospect of having another device in this in the family and having this kind of, you know, um hybrid experience where you're you're using the the deck on the go, you're using the Steam machine in your living room or in your office, in your gaming space, whatever it is. I I, I want to hear from folks at home and what what do you think would be an appropriate price? What do you want to see functionality wise? What are the tech benchmarks that you're expecting to see? Like what graphics cards do you want it to be analogous with? And, and I think with the Steam controller, right? What functionality are you looking for there? Do you agree with me that just having the same experience you have on the deck on a controller is the ideal? Or do you want to see some additional functionality come as well? Yeah, I'm, I, I, I want to discuss it next week, but, I, you know, I've got an idea in my mind as to what a new Steam controller looks like, and it's not too dissimilar to remove the screen and shove it together. You know how Sony did the Project Q and the they cut the controller in half? <laughs> and they put, yeah, they cut it in half and they put the screen in between. Well, just take the way the screen and shove them together, and I'll be fine. I'll be very happy because it's got everything I need on there. I'm into that. I'm into that. So we'll talk more about that next week. And if you want to write in, for that main topic or any other part of the show, guess what? There's a bunch of ways you can do that by heading over to flipscreen.games. That's our website where you can find links to all the places we are all over the web, including our Discord and our email address where you can write in and keep the conversation rolling in between episodes. Uh, so however you choose to get involved, I hope that you'll write in for next week's show. There's a bunch of ways you can get in touch and share those thoughts or comment on the video if you're over on YouTube, right? However you get uh, those thoughts out. We'd love to include them on next week's main topic. Uh, so we've got a lot more Steam Deck conversation ahead of us here today. But before we do that, let me remind you that this episode of the Steam Deck podcast is brought to you by our Patreon producers for the month of May. They are, of course, oh, no, I'm sorry, for the month of June for the first time. Welcome to June, everybody. Jesus, this year is already half over. <laughs> they are, of course, Arnold J. Rimmer, Christopher Valenz, Earth Visitor, Gabriel Hasselmeyer, a.k.a. Asobi, Snack It Go, Ty the Dude, and Waka Hula. Thank you all so much for your support over on patreon.com slash flip screen games. You are the realest of the real, and we greatly appreciate your support of this and all of our sister shows. As I said, if you want to show your support, become a Patreon supporter, you want to find links to get involved in the community or right into the show, flipscreen.games. That's your location. Go check it out. However you choose to get involved. Thanks for tuning in to another one. Let's get into uh, one of my favorite reoccurring segments on this show where we'll, we'll take a look into the most played games on Steam Deck for the month of May. And, uh, you know, it's uh, not too much movement this, this month, Steve. Not too much movement. <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, I guess we didn't have any really massive releases on PC this month. You know, last month it was dominated by The Last of Us. Um, this month, Elden Ring's back on top. Why not, you know? It's, it's still been the number one game for God knows how long. I mean, it, it, it kind of varies. We seem to have the same games all the time, but they're just in different Their orders. position changes, like, yeah. Like one like... month, Red Dead Redemption 2 will be at the top. Another month, it'll be Vampire Survivors. Another month, is Elden Ring. But they're just like shuffle around, but they're always still the same game. Yeah, because like I'm pretty sure Elden Ring was like second or third 
last month. I remember Persona was like 18th, right? And it, it moved up a couple spaces. So, you know, uh, not not zero movement, but yeah, it's it's pretty it's been pretty consistent here. Uh, but we'll we'll run through the yeah. list real quick just for folks uh, well, who are know, listening. I'm, I'm looking at I'm looking at last month's list. You know, a game that's disappeared off this list. What do you that got? was on there last last month? Resident Evil Four. It's completely gone. Wow. I guess people bought it, played it, and never went back to it. And it's what gone. replaced it? Um, I mean, we had all sorts of games on here last month. We had uh, Dredge on there that's not there now. Um, is GTA Five still on the list? Uh, Dead Cells is there. Oh no, Slay it's not. There's like, yeah, there's like tons Dead of Cells like it's a real, real, real mix up, real mix up this month. No, what? no, those two are still there. Yeah, but Dredge isn't there. Resident Evil Four is not there. That's two games. All right, and Grand Theft Auto. So I guess it's three. All right, so it's uh... oh GTA is there. It's there. Where it's, is number, it? it's like number four. Oh, it is right there. You're right. So here, let me let me go through the list. All right, before you already you're already comparing to last month. I haven't even told the people what it is this month. But this month, number one, we had Elden Ring, followed by Stardew Valley, Vampire Survivors, Hogwarts Legacy, Grand Theft Auto Five, Red Dead Redemption Two. Hades, The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim Special Edition, The Binding of Isaac Rebirth, Cyberpunk 2077, NBA 2K 2023, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, Cult of the Lamb, Monster Hunter Rise, Persona 5 Royal, Fallout 4, Brotato, No Man's Sky, Slay the Spire, and Dead Cells. Cult of the Lamb's back as well. That wasn't there last month. That got bumped last month? Wow, all right, cool. People replaying 2022 games and just like making a comeback. I mean, Cult of the Lamb, extremely good game. And that's always the interesting thing is, like, you see certain games jump back up because they had a sale, right? Like, they, oh, yeah, they announced... Oh, yeah, they had, Red um, Dead did that, right? They had an update, too. So I bet you that brought And Cyberpunk up. got in there, yeah. Yeah. The, the Witcher 3 also had its update. That's back on the, it's on the list, you know? So, they, yeah, it's interesting. Very interesting to, to see how things... How things change month to month. I think um, I, at the end of the year, I'd love to do, like, a like a breakdown of all of them, you know, and be, I'd see like which games, you know, we, we should do some kind of like data thing, you know, where it's like, they, the steam do that. Don't they like the, the like top games of like the year, but I guess you could do like this month every in summer, everyone was playing this. And yeah. And spring, I think it would, it would be interesting to go games. through and see like which games stayed in the top 20 for the, the most months and like what games yeah. like were, you know, had the best runs. Right. Cause like I, you got to imagine Elden ring is going to be on this list. The entire year, Stardew Valley is going to be on this list. The entire year, Vampire Survivors, entire year. Like, there's some games that I think are going to stick stick around and and are going to just continue to be on this list, maybe forever, right? But there's some other ones where it's like, you know, are people still going to be playing like something like Hogwarts Legacy, right? Which is like a story game. You know, it's like people are still playing it, but I imagine people are still buying it and playing it for the first time and all that kind of stuff. Is there going to be a point where, okay, like that game has kind of had its moment and, you know, it's not going to have the the amount of hours and play time that you see for, you know, something like an Elden Ring that you got to imagine people are going to play over and over and over and over. I don't know. It'll be the Hogwarts Legacy seems to stick around, though, in the in a way that Resident Evil 4 didn't. I thought Resident Evil 4 would have still been here because it's not that. It's not been out for for that long. I'm I kind surprised of to see that a couple one of months. Of yeah, I, I'm very surprised by that. But it's also a short game. Yeah, you're right. It's a short game, and I guess you know the majority of people play it on launch, especially as it was a good PC launch. It's not like The Last of Us where people played it and then came back to it. And also, The Last of Us probably the playtime was skewed by the fact that we all had to wait two hours for the shader caches to. Uh, to compile I, so they get an extra two hours of play time there at, at the top it'll be interesting to see if it comes into the top 20 at any point this year like if it like starts working and then people flock back to it maybe there's a sale that same kind of thing right or like does it take until next time that the show comes out and then that has renewed interest or, or it has does a it ever there, you know Maybe people, maybe it never plays well on the Steam Deck. Like it could play well on PC, but it could be just the, the Steam Deck. People are just like, yeah, I tried it. Maybe and I've I don't heard know. Bad things about it, and I'm kind of done with that. I feel like they'll figure it out. Yeah, I don't, you have more faith, faith than I do. 
Yeah, I've played that game. It's not. In, it's not in a good. It's not in a good place. It's still not in a good place. I mean, I'm saying I, I see somebody literally who's replied to the the tweet that we're referencing, and they say I've been playing The Last of Us and it's been great. I honestly can't believe it's not at least in the playable list yet. So I mean, I don't know, right? Like yeah. maybe maybe you're right, and it it won't hit that threshold where it's good enough to um get that well, the, yeah the reason but... it's not in the in the player boys is um they're waiting for naughty dog to resubmit it and i'd imagine that they're not happy with the state it's it's still in yeah and um, there's still some work to be done there and they've said they're prioritizing the general pc release before they prioritize the steam deck which i honestly think is the right thing to do the, sure. the general pc release was in a me- was a mess you know you could play it on maxed out hardware and it still gave you problems yeah. So you, you start at the kind of the top and, and it should hopefully trickle down. You hope. Yeah. And that, that's, that's my expectation, but maybe, maybe I am being overly optimistic, you know, um, obviously they released it in a state that I wouldn't have predicted. So we shall see. Yeah. yeah aside from that though, you know, uh, this, this list makes sense to me, right? <laughs> the legs vampire survivor has like the m- amount of hours people got out of that game for like 2.99 it's insane absolutely yeah. insane i mean it's just it's such a perfect it's such a perfect experience on the steam deck you know yeah it really is yeah i would i don't think i'd have played as much if i couldn't play it handheld and it's mm-hmm. not a great experience on mobile i like having sticks and i can a bigger screen that i can see because you play it vertically on your phone it's really weird yeah i wouldn't have played it at all if it wasn't on Steam Deck, I'm confident in that. It's not a game I would want to play on, you know. I, I guess it came to Switch, right? Or it's coming to Switch? I, I would, no, I guess, no, it never no? came to Switch. Okay. I don't think it's been announced for Switch. I think it may be Xbox console exclusive. Okay, and like I wouldn't want to play it there. You know, like that's, that's, I don't think that's the type of experience that I was looking to get out of it. You know, it was like a perfect game for me to wind down with at the end of the day type thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm with you on that. So we'll be back next month to tell you what the big games were in June. So we'll uh, we'll have to see if if, uh, that top three can maintain its status. (laughs) What's going to be so funny for June is I imagine so many people are going to be playing Diablo 4 and it's not on Steam. So it's not going to make the list, even though tons and tons of people are going to be playing it on Steam Deck because it runs so well there. I can't decide if I want to play it there or not. Why would you not? Like, it's the perfect handheld game. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, that's why I want it there. But I'm wondering if, like... I don't know. You said it runs great and everything. So I guess that's fine. But... Yeah. It depends if you're you're thinking of playing it on your TV and you think that's where you're going to spend the majority of your time. I don't know. Then maybe a console release is the best for you. It's like, I feel like I could see it playing it that way more because it is so pretty and it does have, like, a really cool art style and everything so it's like i could see wanting to play it that way and then maybe i just grab it on xbox or playstation and then i just stream it to the deck you know um using one of your yeah, helpful tutorials. tutorials if you want to know yeah. about that yeah, yeah exactly I say. <laughs> so i don't know i'm still not deciding because it's cross play right so like i don't have to have it on steam to play with you it or is cross play i also believe it's cross progression so you may be able to choose on one and then or spend another 70 dollars on another i can't platform. do that can't be doing that how about cross? Yeah. How about cross spend buy? We need a cross plus. buy. Let's bring back cross buy. No, no, never gonna happen. <laughs> that was great. I loved that about uh, the. That was like the one, the one thing that the Vita could ha- hang its hat on was like, hey, you know, you bought. Even then, it was like <laughs> so few titles, but it was a lot was of like good tiny ones. Indie titles. Like I remember, like I had Shovel yeah. Knight, and it worked. It just worked, and it was like, oh shoot, that's awesome. That's great. I would love that. Undertale was one of them as well. Yeah. But that, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, and therein, many. therein lies the value of having a steam machine again, right? Is or like you know having that living room PC where you can do the the big picture mode thing? Because then it wouldn't even be a question. I'd be like, yeah, absolutely. I'll pick it up on PC and I'll just. Well, I mean, it might run fine with your dock on your TV. You know, that's a big might. Though. You're gonna give it a go. You know? I mean, it ran fine at 720p on the Steam Deck. I can't imagine it would look that bad if you plugged it into your TV at 720p. Mm. Like, mm. It's not like, it, you know, you're very zoomed out looking at isometric graphics. It's not, it's not you know, the most intense game. Unless no, there's lots of monsters right. on the screen. I don't know. We'll have to think about it. We'll have to think about it. You'll have to, you'll have to, 
You'll have to be the I'm getting on You let me know. But I'm getting it on PC. I know I am. Because yeah, I that's know. where I played the beta. I sp- I spent they sent me how many how much time I spent 30 hours in the in the beta over two Pretty weekends. Good. I spent Pretty a lot of time playing that game. And that was like one tiny section of the map. I'm so excited about that game. <laughs> I'm gonna spend so much from lose so much of my life for that game. <laughs> I can't wait. So uh, speaking of games that, you know, maybe have a shot of ending up on that most played list, uh, we got the the baffling announcement uh, that Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart is coming to PC, and it's coming on July 26th. Uh, so right around the corner, yeah. just weeks away. So I, I think at first glance, I thought it was baffling as well. Like, why would they not show this in the showcase? But then I remembered, and I watched it back, and Jim Ryan was at the front, and it was games coming to PlayStation. And that was the words that came out of his mouth. Uh, yeah, but... Games that, coming to PS5. They decided this is not that, a game. Though. Like, how hard would it have been? This is not a game coming to PS5. Okay, great. But you could have just not said that and been like, hey, it's the PlayStation. Because they said it was games coming to PlayStation 5. And then they showed me a Gran Turismo movie trailer. So what's the, what's up with that, man? <laughs> That's not and a game. Some hardware. It's some headphones. Like, Yay. Yeah, it's like they showed me that crap. Why couldn't they show me this? Okay, yeah, fair point. I don't know. I have no idea why. Maybe I think they people just didn't want to give Insomniac too much. Might, you know, might have been like, Insomniac, you've already got 10 minutes to the end. You're not having any more time for your game, <laughs> even though it's really good. Even though this is a, yeah, I mean, this game's great, right? Like, I, well, you and I both really yeah. enjoyed this game. Um, I, I, I thought it was really delightful, and I think it's, you know, one of the few really must play exclusive games on ps5 so the fact that no, no longer exclusive yeah yeah and i mean that's crazy like that is uh very very They're cool diminishing very very quickly <laughs> what's that there was like there was they're diminishing very very quickly there was like four mm-hmm. exclusives i think they're now down to three and we know gran turismo 7 is coming yeah and I imagine that Demon Souls is not far behind. Um, and, they're both on that NVIDIA leak. And this is, was also on the NVIDIA leak that we spoke about on the Flip Screen Games podcast. That leak is ticking all the boxes. They're just checking them all off. Um, Ghost of Tsushima's on there as well. Um, and, like, but that, even from the PlayStation Showcase, um, uh, Talos Principle 2 was announced. That was on the leak. It was on the NVIDIA leak. Now, that leak is just like legit. They need to give me Ghost of Tsushima already. All right. We've now had two, count them, two PS5 games that came out after Ghost of Tsushima come to Steam. I just want to play it on my Steam Deck, guys. Like, what? Like, just give me, just give me a good port of Ghost of Tsushima. That's all I want. Yeah. Well, I love Ratchet know, and maybe. Clank. I love Ratchet and Clank. No disrespect. Rift Apart was great, but come on. I, I, I think it's on you because as Doc, that Doc guy was saying in the Discord, you know, he he called you out because you didn't play Legends with him. It's all on you. It's your fault. It's all my fault. You know, they're like, Pete he said didn't it was play 2021. Legends. 2021, he was asking to play Ghost of Tsushima Legends with, with yeah. him. And you said you would. I did. Just like you said you'd open his Joy Cons. And you've still not done that either. They're right here. And I have still... the tool. I just can't get them open, Steve. I'm trying. Stop on that. And you didn't play games with him. So you know, I do, you know, honestly, I hope you don't get Ghost of Tsushima now. If that's how you're gonna try. That's so messed here. up to the <laughs> Ghost of Tsushima community, and also it only hurts Doc because Doc loves the game too. It'd be yet another well, opportunity uh, you know, hope, for me I to promise Doc that I would play Legends and then not yeah. do it. Maybe that's the holdout with it because they, they've all been single player experiences that they brought to PC so far. Maybe they're they're like waiting to bring the multiplayer with element with them as well and get that infrastructure mm. set up and how do we do cross play with like pc and do we bring your friends list from playstation over or do we okay, need our own might be right. like how do we do all of that because everything else has been single player experiences over on on um pc i wonder how that works now because legends they spun legends off like you can get legends as its own thing and it's either you get it for free if you own Ghost, or I think it's twenty dollars on its own. Maybe is the thing, but I wonder because I don't think I've played Ghost since that happened. No, because did that happen with Island of Iki? I can't remember. Because I'm wondering if it's if it's still 
in the game in that same way? Or has it been pulled out? And it's a, you know what I mean? I, I, I'm not sure how that works. I don't think. Yeah, I think it's still in there. So I don't think you could release it without the multiplayer component, which that could be, I guess, you know, a heavier lift or whatever. But come on. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I hope it comes soon. I'm so curious about this, though, right? Because one, we don't know if Ratchet and Clank is even going to be Steam Deck supported. It's coming from Nixies. They are the they're the the house that handled Spider Man, uh, which makes me think it will and work. and Spy, uh, Spider Man Miles Morales. So I do think it's probably going to work. And they have mentioned this directly from the Steam listing: choose from a wide variety of graphics quality options to tailor to a wide range of devices, all the way from high end PCs to portable PC gaming devices. Which means Steam Deck. It's going to be Steam Deck supported. Yeah. Come on. It, we're fine. It doesn't say the portable PC powerhouse that is the Steam Deck, but it's close yeah, enough. Yeah, but I think it's close because enough. it's saying portable It's saying portable PC gaming devices so that all you, you know, second-class portable PC players who have an INEO or whatever. Yeah, you can play it on your thing, too, but on Steam Deck, it's, you know, it's going to sing, baby. Come on. Spider-Man and Miles Morales <laughs> were both great at launch, right? Like, they didn't have any problems, to my memory. No, they were really good, and they run really, really well. So Nixie's is the porting house. You want to work yeah. on your game. Uh, I, I really wish that they had worked on The Last of Us, because I feel like that would have launched in a really, really good um, position. Because they add in everything. They cram in everything that PC players could want. You know, you've got ultra-wide support, uh, 21 by 9, 32 by 9, or 48 by 9 for triple monitor support. Yeah. Can you imagine playing Ratchet and Clank with three monitors? You get everything. NVIDIA DLSS 3, FSR 2, XESS, uh, NVIDIA's DLAA, and Reflex are in there. Like, they just chuck, they absolutely chuck the kitchen sink at it. Uh, and it's always really nice to see Nixies know exactly how to do a PC game because that's what so, they are known for. And here's the other thing, right? So in addition to that, the other... Because I was trying to find this if I, could, if I could get confirmation here. It looks like they didn't develop the PC port of Horizon, but that they did the patches for it, which means... Uh -huh, and they fixed it. <laughs> right. So like, because I know that, that that game didn't necessarily like launch busted but i remember it having like really high had the, had the same thing with the uh the mouse issue i believe where it was like jerk if you used a mouse and um, i and i also remember it, i remember i i think it was a sobi who said in the discord that like it had like really high requirements and stuff like that so it was like not you know maybe not the best optimized but the idea that now it runs pretty well and that they were the ones that did the patching for it it's like well yeah okay so Come on. I feel like I feel like we're going to, you know, and hey, call me a PlayStation fanboy, whatever. Like, maybe I'll be bit in the butt for saying this one. But I feel like, like you said, I think Nixies is the one you want to in the port. If they're doing the port, I have confidence it'll come out well. <laughs> yeah, me too. Like, the, the games they've worked on, the PC ports they've done over the years. Like, they did the Tomb Raider series, right? That was, a, I think, the first one they did was the, the Tomb Raider reboot 2013. They brought all of those games to PC. They did the Avengers, P Marvel of, Marvel's Avengers PC port. Granted, not a great game, but the port That's was really well received. <laughs> Yeah, and they did the two Spider-Man games. So they have they are really really good. Uh, at, I can't at believe how games. good those games look on Steam Deck. Yeah, I know it's phenomenal, isn't it? Absolutely phenomenal. So so hopefully this this does run on Steam Deck, and it's and it's uh, a good port. Curiously though, I still can't figure out what the hell Sony's doing with their pricing. This is only fifty quid in the UK. It's a seventy pound game. So I, I genuinely, I still cannot rack my head around their I'm pricing sorry. plan. Wait, really? It's yep. seventy on on PS Five for you? Yeah. It still is in the US, right? You no, know, it is for us. But I thought because that's consistent. That's ten dollars less. That's been every Steam yeah. release for them has been they've, and ten dollars like less. Twenty less. That is so UK. weird. I don't understand UK pricing. It's so random. It's like, if it's physical, it's less money. If it's digital, it costs more, unless it doesn't. What? Okay. I know, it's so weird. I, and granted, it's in, this is a game that's old now. It's included in the PlayStation Plus say it's extra old. plan, so you can play I mean, it. It's, it's like... No, but it's not like... It's not like 
with The Last of Us, right? That was a six-month-old game. So I was surprised when six months after its release, it released on PC at a cheaper price than at twenty pounds cheaper than the PS5 port. What does Spider-Man Remastered cost? One. Spider-Man Remastered is forty nine ninety nine in on Steam in the UK. That's that's the same. and weirdly Uncharted. You get two games. It's forty four ninety nine. I cannot. I can't that- think of that either. <laughs> no, I just talked myself out of it. I was going to say that makes more sense because those games are old, but Spider-Man was old, but it was just the up version of it. So it was like more like a PS5 yeah. game. So it's like, okay, like maybe that makes sense. But I mean, that's the thing. That game came out on PC last year, didn't it? Or was it two years ago? Yeah. Yeah. Miles yeah, I mean, Morales that's... came out. Um, that came out in August last year. And then Miles Morales came out in November last year. Right. And, so, I mean... and, and Ma- Miles Morales is only thirty nine ninety nine in the UK. On Steam, that's such a it's like good 50 deal. That's on such a PS5. good deal. Yeah, I mean, well, if it's fifty here, I don't. Like, know. why would you? I don't know why. If you had a game in PC, you would even contemplate getting a PS5 when they six months after their release with The Last of Us, you can get the game for twenty quid cheaper. It make it honestly makes no sense to me. At some point, they've you've got to think they're going to want pricing parity, especially when they start doing day and day releases, which I think they will for their multiplayer titles, because they announced a lot of multiplayer titles that said it was also coming to PC in the showcase. I think that's like Jade Raymond's. Game. I think that's different though. Like I think you're right that that, that uh, you'd want pricing parity across games that are being simultaneously. But you think you would want that across this anyway? Because it's the same thing. Yeah, it's because like... I can go and buy it from the digital. So if I've only got a digital only PlayStation, my only choice is to buy the game digitally. Right. And I've got to spend every single time twenty pounds more. At some point that adds up and I'm just like, why? Why am I paying a tax for your own platform that you own a hundred percent of that you get one hundred percent of the game from? You think it would be the inverse, that it would cost more on the yeah. other platform because yep. they're getting a cut. Like it's thirty they... percent. I don't understand. And that's the thing is that is unique to your market, like the the gap. But like the $10, you still got a gap. The dip ten dollar difference is still the same here. So it's like there is still you're playing you're paying a tax to own the console. And more work's been done because we've had to get another studio to port the game to PC. Yeah. So you'd think again and you know, like obviously I don't think porting a game to PC costs as much as making it. No, but there's still additional work involved. So you'd think they'd want the price to be the same as the PS5 You'd think version. you'd just want the price to be the same anyway, because why would the hell would it not be? Yeah. And then I was like, well, can you price it at £70 or $70 on Steam? And yes, you can, because Final Fantasy Final VII Fantasy, Remastered Yeah, you, you pointed that out like forever ago. That was the first one. Yeah. So you can. So it's not that. It's an active choice. Buy Sony to price it at, at $59.99 or $49.99 in the UK. I don't understand. No, me neither. I don't know. That's so it's so weird. I, I that's that's it. You know, like I I that's the kind of thing I'd love to be a fly on the wall of those decisions and how they get made and be able to Yeah, I wonder if they've done some like market research, like how many more copies will we sell if we price this at $59.99 on PC rather than $69.99? Yeah. Because maybe PC players know that there's going to be a sale at some point on Steam, and so they'll just wait. Whereas if it's fifty nine ninety nine, the same price as every other PC game apart from Final Fantasy, maybe the people will buy it for full price at launch, and they will go in for the risk of like maybe this is a crappy port or whatever. But they will buy it at full price at launch, which a lot of players don't. They just wait for sales. Yeah, maybe. And there is like the the mentality that like if you're the type of person who wants to play the game. At launch, that's why you have a PlayStation. But if you don't yeah. care and you're willing to play the game, you know, four years late, then whatever, right? Yeah, but I mean, in a lot of cases, it's six months to a year at this point late. So it's not, only you're not with, even waiting only that with long. Miles, though, right? No, that's the, the only last one was that... part one as well. Yeah, that, you're, you're, and then also literally Returnal. correct. But I don't think about that in the same way because it's a re-release of an old game, mm-hmm. right? Like, a, Re- Returnal it's... wasn't that long either. No, I think that... that was like a year. Wasn't that like eighteen months? It's more Maybe. like a year and a half. But they're getting, it? they're getting those gaps are getting shorter and shorter and shorter. Yeah. And I imagine yeah, I... as Nixies need more games to port, it's going to keep getting that gap's going to close. Ratchet and Clank being 
this short is very surprising to me. I, I definitely would not have seen that coming. Um, but again, I mean, at this point, like you said, it's not old, but it's older. It came out in 2021, right? Was it a launch title? Right? Yeah, it must have been 2020, because no, I remember though. getting it the year I had my PS5. Yeah, but I, I don't... I got my PS5 for Christmas, and I got Ratchet and Clank that year. Yeah, but you got it late. It wasn't maybe not a launch tub, but launch window, launch window. or whatever they were yeah. calling it. Do you remember? They were like, oh, this is in the launch window. But Again, that that's not Miles a new Morales thing. But came out the same year. That's the, that was launch title. That was out. I bought that. Yeah. That was the first game I played on it. And um And... And I would imagine the reason they've done this one yeah. is because it's an Insomniac game again. It probably uses a very similar engine to Spider-Man. Uh, and so they'd already done a lot of the porting work with Insomniac's tooling so that this may, is a logical next game. So, yeah, I was, I was correct. It was 2021, and it came out in June. Oh, okay. I, I had a good time playing that. Yeah, it was great. It was really great. I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, it was it was on my short list for game of the year that year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it was for me too. I can't remember what I, I thought was better. I can't I can't quite remember maybe that, either. Maybe that was Metroid. Maybe that was Metroid. Is that right? Hmm. Yeah, because it was the year before last, and last year, you know, we all know it was Elden Ring. Gotcha. You're right. Yep, that lines up. All right. Well, speaking of Metroid. We're going to jump into the question block here. We got a question uh, from Andy Rads over on the Discord who wrote in and said, moving on from Tears of the Kingdom, will Nintendo ever release games on PC in the future? No one thought Sony would release theirs, but here we are. I don't think they ever will, but surely there's a market for it. Let me add that Nintendo being heavy-handed when it comes to games preservation may see porting games to PC as making it easy for bootleggers. Interesting question. Um... I I don't think that they they consider it making it easy for bootleggers. I mean, it's ridiculously easy to pirate Steam to pirate Switch games. So you know, at this point, the cat's out of the bag. Um, yeah, they they screwed. I, I think up a PC and, version and... does make it a little easier, though, right? You don't even have to dump. Things. I don't know. Just, you just like, have it. If they were really worried about it, though, that they'd put that de novo DRM bullshit on it, like that, that'd be a way to get around it, or like you'd have yeah. to have a perpetual internet connection to their server. Like, if they really wanted to protect it on PC, they could do it. I just don't think they they see the point. You know, they're on top. They're selling so many switches. They're continuing to sell you so many switches. You already the same thing about PlayStation, though. Yeah, maybe, but I, 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 I kind of think that they're different in a way. I mean, I don't. Are. I think. I think the games that the PlayStation were were bringing to PC, it was like they were dipping their toes in, right? They initially started, and we had Death Stranding, which wasn't really their game, but it was their engine. So we'll see how that goes. And then that went well. So then we got Horizon, because it already ported the engine at that point. So that comes over. Let's bring God of War. And then it was like, oh, we can make a lot of money reselling these. I don't know that. I, I don't know that Nintendo th- feel the need to because it probably sells hardware. People probably bought Switches to play Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, yeah, but because I they mean, know that their games sell hardware. This is the whole argument, though, because I think that's also the case with PlayStation. It's just, it's not as popular. I, I don't think there's as much crossover with Nintendo players, though, because I think I'm only buying a PlayStation at that point to play PlayStation exclusives. And I feel for like I'm buying a Nintendo console to play those, but also play the party games to also, you know, have people around and I want to plug it into my TV and I can also take it away with me. Whereas PlayStation, the only reason I'm buying it is to play like two, three games. And at, at some point that expense looks like a lot. Like, do I buy a PlayStation 5 or do I upgrade my GPU this year? And I may just choose to upgrade my GPU instead, that instead of spending that money on a console so I can play one game that I'm interested in. Yeah, but Especially you... now that I know that that one game's coming to PC in two years' time. Yeah, but you could make the exact same argument about Nintendo, right? Where it's like, if Nintendo no, was like, yeah, well, there's could. money to be had in us selling Tears of the Kingdom on PC because we know that people want to play it, people would buy it. I think the argument, the reason it gets interesting is because I think you're right that, like, Nintendo... I think Nintendo exclusives sell hardware more than Sony exclusives do, right? Yes. I think there are a huge contingency of people 
that own a PlayStation just as their, this is where I play video games. And it's because I, my friends play there or the strength of the PlayStation brand attracted me, or maybe I like some of the PlayStation exclusives enough to care about that or whatever. Right. But um, we've talked about how, you know, the, the stuff that's on the most played list there is stuff that's multi-platform more often than not. Whereas I don't think that would be the case if you did that with Nintendo, right? Like, you don't buy a Nintendo Switch to do anything but play Nintendo games. Oh, yeah. You Unless, just got to look you know, at, like, how many copies of Mario Indies. Kart's been sold, right? Right, exactly. Whereas, like, or, or even just Ratchet and Clank, right? Like, on, on the Wikipedia page, it was like, oh, by July 2021, uh, Sony confirmed the game had sold 1.1 million units, right? It's like, I'm sure it sold more since then. I'm sure it'll sell more on PC, but that's a lot less than that's what... That's no Tears of the Kingdom, which sold 10 million in three days. Right. And granted, PlayStation does have IP that is bigger selling, right? Like God of War sells more like that, you know? Um, but that's also a legacy franchise that's been around a really long time. And that's the thing that that does it, you know? And I don't, I don't know. It's, I think it's interesting because Nintendo's software or um, hardware is also cheap, right? Like an investment in a Switch is a much smaller ask for a, a person who maybe plays on PC primarily, right? Um, to be like, buy a handheld device that you can play whatever the Nintendo exclusives are that you care about, mm -hmm. whether it's Zelda, whether it's Smash, whatever. And then if you do want that gaming on the go experience, it also fulfills a niche for you. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, There's a much better value proposition for buying a Switch. It's not just, oh, I can go play those games there. Uh, because they're not on PC, it very much is like I can I can get a lot of use out of this. I can take it on holiday with me, or or on a trip. I can have friends around to play Smash with, or play a bit of Mario Kart, or I can give it to my kids when I'm not playing it, and they can play Mario and have a good time and mess around in Animal Crossing. I don't think that they see the need to bring it to PC. I think there probably was a time. I think if the Switch had failed, in the same way that the Wii U was not not a successful product i think at that point they probably would have reassessed their strategy and gone well maybe we should release some on other platforms and give that a go uh, but i i at the moment they're riding high the switch 2 is going to sell like crazy everyone's really excited about it tears of the kingdoms in the game of the year we're only halfway through the year but everyone knows it nothing's going to beat it um so what's the point in releasing it on on other platforms when if you've got the game of the year on your platform people are going to want to buy your platform in order to play it yeah but again, it's like, I think it's deeper than that. Because I think that's true, but I also think it is the strength of Nintendo's IP, right? Comparatively, where like most of Sony's most bankable IP is not, it's not a fraction of the success that Nintendo's is, you know? Whereas like, you know, The Last of Us, right? Like just had a big HBO series and its star is on the rise and, you know, it, it's it's got more recognition than ever. And The Last of Us 2 sold, like, what, like 10 million copies in that, like, initial window? Again, I'm sure it's sold more mm -hmm. now since then or whatever, but that was, like, the big report at the time. And you compare that to, you know... And even then, that was a sequel, right? Right. To a, 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 something that has already been established. But I guess or, that pretty much every Nintendo game is a sequel at this point. If it's got Mario on the box, it's going to sell. Or, or again, not just Mario, though, right? It's like Pokemon. Every Pokemon game sells more copies than that. Every one. Yeah. And I don't think I don't think anybody could argue. Not nobody, but I think few people would argue <laughs> that the quality of Pokemon Scarlet is the same as The Last of Us Part Two, right? Like, um, or even like, you know, I, you know, I compare that game to even Tears of the Kingdom, right? And I'm just like, wow. They'd have had years to polish this game like they did with Tears of the Kingdom. Maybe we'd have finally got a Pokemon game that I didn't look at and think that's a bit of a mess or well, that's yeah, a bit exactly. of a shame. Like Yeah. But point being the IP sells itself. And like not to say that that game is doesn't have any redeeming qualities, that there's not reasons to play it, but like every Pokemon fan I've spoken to loves that game. They, they look past it in the same yeah. way that, you know, we've got a question on Nintendo Noise next week about do we need new Nintendo hardware when a game can be as good as Tears of the Kingdom? I think that conversation will probably come up in um, in the Steam Deck's lifetime, right? It's like, well, when games are good enough, like when is good enough? Uh, I think people need to make that decision themselves. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't see a, a 
future where Nintendo <laughs> brings games to PC. I not think in the I, foreseeable future. I, yeah, and not in the foreseeable future, right? Never say never. If you had asked me last generation if PlayStation would ever bring their games to PC, I would have said no, right? And, you know, I think, you know, you've made good points about why it is a strategy that makes sense for them, I guess, depend in the way that they've implemented it, right? In a limited capacity. Um, but they, they've mitigated the cannibalism of sales on their own console because you're not enough. buying it day and day. You, you, if you wanted a PlayStation, well, one, you couldn't get them at the time. And I think that probably did factor into the strategy a little bit. It's like, well, we've got all this software. We're going to have to release it on PS4 as well because there's not enough PS5s in the wild and we really need to sell games. Why don't we also release some of our old games on PC and capitalize on this? these ips that are just and these games are already made that are just sitting around and you also have the reality that you know those games get discounted heavily at certain points right like if you t play your cards right you could buy a game like horizon for like ten dollars at some point you know um and that's an insanely good deal for you um but that's not necessarily an option with nintendo games right they they don't often go on sale when they do it's usually not for a deep discount uh, getting like 50% off on a Nintendo game is like huge, you know, and mm -hmm. they continue to sell in a way that exclusives from PlayStation and Xbox just don't, you know, um, not in that way. So, yeah, I think unless Nintendo's fortunes really change, I can't, I can't see them wanting to make that concession. And I also think that they think about hardware and software as being intimately connected in a way that the other guys don't right or like the functionality of their devices often influences how how the games are made yeah i think you're right about that um I, there was always like the gimmick the new gimmick that comes to the next console right and you know in this one it was seemed to be the ir sensor that's been very had very limited use but they but clearly had like ideas for it anyway like we and they did stuff with it i feel like the gimmick of the switch is is the it being a handheld and a home console though and i think you have seen them take advantage of that and had that influence the way that games are made as well though right where it's I, like i, I, think, I think in of... the same way that they've done it in the past though like the ds did so many innovative things like there were games when you could you would close the the ds in the middle of it and that would be like how you solved a puzzle in like another code where sure. you like blew into the microphone to blow dust off of stuff that like, there was and, a lot of cool uses in that. Yeah, but I think a lot of that stuff were gimmicks and like that doesn't mean that it's not cool or interesting or innovative, but I think like what the Switch's innovation has been is like leaning into that, you know, that use case and that it is this like hybrid device that can have this wide range of experiences, but also I think I look at like the design philosophy behind something like Tears of the Kingdom or Mario Odyssey where the game is made in a way where you could play this game for if you got five minutes and you're, you know, you're on the, you're in a waiting room or maybe you're on the train and you got 20 minutes to play, like you can get something done and you can have a meaningful, fun experience, or you can play the game for like six to 10 hours on your TV and get lost in it. Right. And like, that is something that I think is different. You know, they used to make games that felt more like this is the small bite size experience for the handheld. And this is the big, full, you know, more quote unquote triple A experience. And I think that has gotten closer and closer together, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, I for one was happy to see Animal Crossing return to home consoles because I missed playing that on my TV. I very much missed playing sure. that on my TV. The fact that it was just like a handheld experience. But and you did always get that, right? That was their strategy. We're going to release both games on Wii U and then 3DS. And then it was like, but you're going to get the slightly crappier version on the 3DS. Uh, I, I, yeah, I bet this is, yeah, this is not going to happen anytime soon. Unfortunately. No, it's an interesting as question. As I would though. like it to. Yeah, I mean, I think especially as like handheld PCs become proliferated, right? Like then you're just feeding your competitors in a way that's not good either. Yeah. So uh, I, I don't know how much you want to get into it, right? We're, we're kind of running up on the end of the show here, but I did want to, um, just give us a short plug for our episode of Nintendo Noise this week because we got into uh, the whole story around the Dolphin emulator being blocked on Steam and kind of the broader story behind it that, you know, got missed in some of the initial reporting. Um, so it's a really good episode. I think even if you are not a, generally a Nintendo person, um, 
it, it's it's Steam Deck user friendly, I would say. Yeah, I think it's it's well worth going to listen if you've been confused and think Nintendo's just being Nintendo with uh, the Dolphin stuff. There's a lot more to the story there. If you've not looked into it, then go check out Nintendo Noise this week because um, the first half of the show is all about uh, Dolphin and, and emulation in general, things tools like Lockpick, RCM that are, are going away. Um, and what that means, what, what does that mean? Is it ever going to come to Steam? Um, it's a good conversation, I think, as well worth listening to. Agreed. So, uh, yeah, go go have that conversation over there, or go go check out that conversation over there, I guess I should say, um, because uh, I would definitely love to hear uh, the Steam Deck community's thoughts on it and if y'all want us to address it on next week's show make sure you're right in of course remember you can do that by hitting us up at questions at flipscreen.games by heading over to the discord and steam deck podcast chat and keeping the conversation rolling between episodes over there uh or you can drop us a comment over on youtube if you're watching us over there hello um however you choose to get in touch or get involved we thank you for tuning in and being a being a listener and for joining us through the end of the episode if you want to find links to any of that stuff head over to our website flipscreen.games and uh Get involved however you choose to do so. We appreciate you. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of the Steam Deck Podcast. For the crew, I've been Pete. He's been Steve. We'll see you next.